afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us again today. I'm Will Day Brosnan and I work in the school attendance policy team here in the department. We're actually hearing from our first um, primary school of this series of webinars today, and you'll know that that's the Brookhouse Primary School here in London. And I'm actually joined by Aaron Wright and Luke Renwick, who are the executive principal and the head teacher of um, Brookhouse, respectively. As ever, they'll be taking some questions at the end of this presentation, so please submit any questions that you've got using the tab on the right hand side of your screen. And if you can post any questions um, as they kind of as they arise in, in, in your uh, kind of head as we go along through the presentation, just so that we've got a chance to pick out the most interesting questions, as I say, as we go along. Um, we're coming up to Easter, uh, so we've got one more webinar next Thursday, um, which is with the Abbey Special School. And then after Easter, we're going to be hearing from a couple of alternative provision settings and also from another primary school. So obviously, please look out for those sessions and sign up to those if you're interested. We'll share um, the set of slides after this presentation has concluded. And we're obviously continuing to upload all of these webinars onto our dedicated best practice page. Please obviously remember to submit any feedback um, to let us know what you thought of this session at the end. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass over to Aaron, who's going to introduce Brookhouse and the work that they do to improve attendance. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks very much. Uh, and hi, everybody. Um, my name's Aaron. I'm the uh, exec head of Brookhouse Primary. And for this webinar, if we could move to the next slide, please. We, we've broken it down uh, into a few elements. Uh, talk a little bit about the background of the school, the context, the strategies we've used for implementing the culture of regular attendance, uh, the whole school community approach, the systems and processes to support the approach, and uh, the pastoral support that we offer for our families and communities and uh, as already said uh, there'll be opportunities for Q&A at the end. So if we go to the next slide please. So in terms of school context, so we're a two form entry primary school in Northumberland Park Ward uh, Tottenham. It is the most deprived ward in London, uh, top five most deprived wards in the country. Uh, most pupils from uh, ethnic minority backgrounds. We celebrate 37 ethnic groups that we have. Majority of pupils have EA, EAL, 49% disadvantaged, a higher proportion of SEN when compared nationally. But at the same time, we do pride ourselves on having a no excuse culture. And of course, whilst we all face many challenges and there's many challenges at Brookhouse, uh, they are just barriers to overcome. And, attendance certainly being one of those uh, when the Lion Academy Trust took over Brookhouse Primary School in 2014 as a result of it being placed in special measures. Uh, the overall absence was 7.4% uh, and uh, persistent absence was 26.2%, so very, very high and obviously a lot of work needed to be done around that. We uh, had an Ofsted uh, Section 5 2016 where uh, they said we were a good school with outstanding elements and we've just had a follow up quite recently uh, last November where they acknowledged the marked improvements that we've made and uh, you know looking forward to a section five inspection uh, you know in the next year or so. Uh, next slide please. So in terms of the positive culture it's obvious that every day counts and when we first came into the school, it is fair to say that many, many families were quite disaffected uh, with what the school does and uh, the offer that the school was providing and the kind of attitude that it doesn't really matter if my child doesn't come to school as they're not going to be missing out on much. And it was very critical that we had to change that perception uh, the urgency uh, and obviously improve the educational offer uh, more so over on top of that. So put in many opportunities for open mornings for the parents, head teachers surgeries just fronting up and we know where the school's been, but this is where the school is going forwards and uh, you know getting the parents in to come and see the teaching and learning as well. And part of the strategy 
because uh, our Aramaican school attended pupil led. So they're very proud of the culture and their school environment that, that we offer for the pupils. And, you know, we kind of liken it. We want it to be the Disney World of, of education, where it's a, a, a school where children come in. It's a place where they can flourish and thrive. And part of that is, is a number of pupil led initiatives from school councils, eco councils. We have pupil ambassadors, head boys, head girls. And of course, uh, the attendance having a very high profile around the school and it's really around fostering that love of learning around the, especially around the personal development. So it's how we're enabling the pupils to be positive and act, active citizens. You know, it's a skill that's needed. It's an attribute that, that people need to succeed. And obviously regular and attendance and a punctuality is preparing them for the next stage of their education, but even further than that, uh, how it's preparing them for the workplace and obviously the expectations to get to work regular and obviously be on time. Um, very to be based in London, with London being one of the best classrooms in the world and how we access that with our timely educational visits from Thames Cruises, London Eye, museums, galleries, taking the children to the theatres, how we've introduced uh, our careers week that uh, happened quite recently, got some local footballers in, uh, you know, to build up a bit of aspiration for the pupils, some celebrities offering Blue Fridays where children get to work with other children uh, across key stages, uh, having 17 after school clubs as well and how we review that provision with our school council timely to get any updates, any suggestions that those pupils have. So computing club kind of turned into drone flying club. That was a thing that the uh, really wanted to do. Um, another thing we really worked on was obviously around parent communications and being very transparent and proactive with our approach in, across all com communications that we have from text message service, weekly newsletters with attendance being a standing item on there and timely parent calendars as well. So parents and look at obviously what the coffee mornings are coming in, class assemblies, when parents evening is, but also for the pupils to look at when their educational visits are coming up and when the wider events supported by the anal analysis of attendance that we do, especially around identifying key trends or periods of attendance. So for, for for example, we, we, we noticed that in September, uh, a number of families uh, returning from their country of origin were returning, so not being, uh, uh, you know, ready to come to school for the first day. So we, we, we kind of front loaded the educational visits there so that they happened very, very early on in the term. And obviously, so children didn't miss out, didn't want to miss out. That was communicated in the uh, calendar that was sent out in the summer. And obviously it supports them with the awe and wonder and the entry points uh, to their curriculum units that they're doing at the start of the year. Uh, we also noticed there was a trend of increased absence in the run up to the Christmas break. Again, a number of families going aboard. Um, so, and again, we analysed that. So in the last week, we kind of backfilled that so that we've got the winter wonderland in there on the second from last day where we've got the ice skating, the Santa's Grotto and the reindeers and inflatables and the raffles and all of those things. Uh, the staff pantomime, again, that's quite a feature that the children get very excited about, look forward to. So that happens in the last week as well. And of course, the nativity performances and, and all of the music performances that come with that as well. Um, example again at Easter before the break. So making sure we've got our annual Easter egg hunt, Easter bonnet parades, we put the school discos on at that time and uh, before the summer holidays where, where we did see a decline in attendance we have our annual Brookhouse has got talent show which um, you know obviously children love and enjoy summer fairs and sports days and all of those things and I'm sure colleagues are have all of these things in place uh, follow up there's to analyze where to put them because you can put them in the calendar the academic year uh, strategically and really the onus is so that the pupils aren't missing out and we're empowering them to want to come to school. So if parents are wanting to go away, the children aren't actually wanting to because they don't want to miss out on any of uh, uh, the, the school led activities, wider things 
that we have going on. Um, and of course, attendance has a very high around the school and in all of our com communications, uh, visuals that we have displays around the school, standing item in the weekly newsletter. Uh, and it is a whole school approach with uh, the assemblies. Uh, it's a standing item agenda. Obviously, we incentivize positive uh, uh, attendance. So uh, the best class with the best attendance for that week um, uh, gets extra time in the target room. They also get some popcorn as well, the microwave one. So the smell of it wafts around and, you, you know, so that they can enjoy that. And the other children wish that they were getting that. And, and attendance and and as a team uh, in that class, they will want to contribute that to that by coming to school regularly, um, you know, to those, uh, those things. Um, and again, with parents uh, making them aware, again, being very transparent. So we use a tiered letter system. Uh, we monitor very closely daily, weekly, half termly, termly. And again, and again, it comes down to culture. And, it, you know, we have to expect our parent community to follow the systems and processes that we have and, and meet to our expectations. And, uh, you know, we do regular home visits uh, and myself uh, and Luke, uh, do those quite regularly. So, you know, if you haven't followed the process by phoning in and letting us know your child's absence, you get a knock on the door uh, from the head teacher. And uh, at times that, that also gets the children in as well. And that, that that did have a ripple effect in the playground, especially obviously parents talk and conversations were had that you've got to make sure you let the school know if your child's not coming in. Um, otherwise, uh, you, you know, you get a knock on your door as, as to one of those processes. And again, uh, you, you know, the culture, we, we obviously don't like the pupils not being here and that just is a continuous approach there. Uh, obviously, especially with safeguarding vulnerable pupils, how we're monitoring them very closely. And I'll kind of talk a bit more about that when we get onto the uh, systems and processes. And ultimately it comes down to the quality of education and uh, we've made significant developments with our uh, bespoke line pathways curriculum. Uh, how we've sequenced it around the core and uh, foundation uh, subjects, something we're very proud of, how it's ambitious, adapted for all and, and broad and balanced, and also how we, we've been able to provide subject specialists as well, music specialists, PE specialists, computing specialists, and so on. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so in terms of systems and processes, obviously the daily attendance monitor the and what of that reporting. So we receive our report at about 10 past nine from our uh, data attendance officer. Uh, children, pupils that are persistent absence, pupils at risk of being absent, and then has contact been made? Is there a reason for the absence and is there a home visit needed there? The weekly analysis analysis is a standing item for our um, weekly SLT agendas and that's really where we're you know supporting and challenging us to uh, where are we what's been successful what perhaps uh, has not been as successful how many referrals have been made how many follow-up meetings have been had with um, parents where necessary uh, we have got an education welfare officer um, buying resource there and again how that informed supports our weekly inclusion meetings where are we with the caseload what's the escalation where needed any next steps analysis of key groups and then how that feeds in uh, to our parental engagement officer uh, for wider support to the families and again i've kind of touched on this around the phone calls home visits any unknown absentees uh, and again, that's following up on systems and processes. We're relentless in our approach there to make sure every single child who's not at school is accounted for. If they're not accounted for, then that inevitably uh, follows up with a home visit. And then if uh, if we still can't get to them, then, then that's a referral. Uh, and home visits obviously regular uh, and as and when needed. Um, so the tiered letter and meeting system that we put in Place. There's, there's essentially three levels to that. So uh, level one uh, is on a white piece of paper and that goes out to parents when 
um, the attendance has dropped below 96%. So we're kind of being proactive before we get to a problem of uh, cusp uh, persistent absence. We're actually letting parents know when their child's percent, obviously for unauthorized attendance. Uh, level two is a uh, on a yellow piece of paper. Uh, if the attendance is between 94 and 92% and obviously is unauthorized absence, then that's meeting with uh, the attendance officer. And obviously uh, the, the, the next level there is, is a, a pink uh, letter, it used to be red, it's now pink. Uh, and that's where attendance is 92% and below, obviously uh, as unauthorized. And then that triggers a meeting with the educational welfare officer uh, uh, and of course, if it drops below 90%, a referral is made uh, to the Educational Welfare Officer uh, to open uh, a case there. Um, again, talked about home visits from the head teacher. Um, and again, that's around setting the tone, of the, you know, the culture. Uh, it can be a bit embarrassing. The head teacher knocks on your door, especially if you're in your pajamas or what may be. It can be a bit embarrassing and at times you know, if that does happen, we'll take the children and we'll, we'll walk them in uh, uh, to school. Obviously then follow up and log that and uh, discuss our weekly inclusion meetings, uh, attendance meetings. Um, and again, uh, uh, accountability. So we set our attendance targets at the start of the year in September. That's reported at local government. Obviously scrutinise at all of our uh, meetings and the kind of, it's, it's always the and what. So if those are the numbers you've, you've got, what are you doing about them? Uh, you know, to make sure children are attending school uh, regularly. And again, shared at our executive forums uh, with uh, the other Lion Trust schools, there's 10 in total. And again, that kind of, not only do we add a bit of competition within the school, that adds a bit of competition uh, across the trust as well. And um, okay, next slide please. And uh, over to you, Luke. Thanks, Aaron. That's great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the pastoral approach. Um, as we know that uh, with attendance, it's the responsibility of the parents to be getting their children into school. And we put a lot of focus on the children wanting to be here uh, and all the exciting things we have going on in school. But also we've got to, we realise that we need to really engage with the parents and break down the barriers that may be there to get the children into school regularly. Um, and that was kind of key with that approach. So how do we overcome the barriers that parents feel there are to getting their children into school? Um, the first kind of strand of that for us was employing a parental engagement officer. And we actually use the pupil premium funding to, to support us with that. Uh, but she plays a really, really key role in terms of being that uh, first point of contact, that friendly face for all of our parents. She's there on the gate every single morning uh, and she supports with such a, a wealth of things uh, from secondary transition, to uh, any housing challenges that uh, families might be presented with to just literally kind of um, can you help me find a food bank that's that's another thing she's worked with and she's also worked with kind of uh, additional language ESOL classes and just kind of giving our, our parent body a voice within the community um, so she's she plays a really really key role in that um, and then similarly as I said so She's there on the gate every morning, uh, but actually we also have an, a very open door policy. So not only is uh, Miss Walters, our parental engagement officer on the gate, a member of SLT is always out every morning on the playground um, as a face for parents to communicate with and talk to. Um, because essentially we want to make our school as approachable as possible so that parents, regardless of their own experience of education, uh, many of our parents don't have an understanding of uh, the, the British education system. Uh, many of them have adverse experiences of school themselves. Uh, so actually kind of breaking down those barriers and making school a friendly, welcoming and open place for them was also really important. Um, another thing with that open door policy is making sure that we as, as leaders are really approachable and it's not difficult to, to have a meeting or to communicate with members of the senior leadership team um, and, and essentially the parents are, are welcome in our school at any time. Uh, the parent engagement officer also uh, plans and develops a range of coffee mornings. We actually have a parent coffee morning almost every single week uh, focusing on a different thing and that can be uh, linked to parenting, it can be linked to areas of our curriculum, uh, parents actually coming into the school and, and seeing the children learn and how we teach. Um, and obviously, again, with the strategy around that, we, we put the emphasis in autumn term around our reception parents. 
Uh, we don't have a nursery as a school, um, so actually it's really important to create that parent community with our reception class um, very early on. Again, so parents don't feel isolated, they've got people that they are familiar with, people that they feel comfortable um, and, and become part of a, a wider community rather than just on their own and see school as, as part of their everyday life. Um, again, with the parent coffee mornings, we also link with multi agencies. So, as I'm sure you're all um, as a school, we work with many different agencies from the MASH team, Early Help, Speech and Language, um, and we make sure that parents are really well connected to the agencies we work with. Um, most recently, we've done a lot of work with the Early Help team in, in uh, Haringey to make sure that they're coming into school to deliver some parent coffee mornings to really explore all of that organisation and what the Early Help team actually does, because we found that some of our parents were quite afraid of early help involvement and actually that can become a barrier to attendance. Uh, those the housing needs, the the kind of uh, poverty that might, a family might be experiencing and the young really supportive for that. So breaking down those barriers, making sure parents are, are aware of the roles of different agencies that we work with. Um, as I mentioned, the parental engagement officer being funded by people premium. We also think about different ways we can use our people premium funding, particularly to target attendance. Uh, one of the barriers for some of our parents is actually getting to school. Uh, we've we've had a number of families moved kind of further away, maybe out of borough, um, but still want to to attend Brook House. And for us, that's a, an effective way to kind of get people into schools. So use some of that funding to support with with bus passes, uh, with access to public transport to make sure that we're again breaking down the barriers for parents to get their children into school. Um, again, that pastoral approach, Erin mentioned around how we do home visits regularly and if parents aren't going to bring their children into school, we will bring them in. Again, it's very much about building that relationship with the parents so that when they knock on the door, uh, yes, initially that might there might be that little bit of embarrassment with the, if they're in their pyjamas, but equally it's, it's kind of them feeling comfortable enough to say, I, I need some help. Uh, please can you help get my child into school today and we will support parents where appropriate to get their children into school um, as much as possible and I think that's that's been something that's really kind of key to the whole approach uh, with our parent engagement and it's around support and challenge not judgment we understand that there are difficulties challenges and and perceived barriers to getting families into school um, and we want to create that culture where parents feel supported um, and challenge to make sure that their children come in. But of course, you've got to build that relationship with your parent body before you can offer that level of challenge. Uh, and knowing, again, as Erin said, that if your child's not in school and you're not full of the process, there's going to be a knock on the door. Um, understanding that culture and building that relationships and it enables us to knock on the door and get the children in, in the afternoon if they've not come in in the morning. Um, and I think building on that, it's very much a done with, not to approach. We don't want parents to feel isolated by the way we're doing things. We want parents to feel like we all have their children's best interests at heart and very much kind of getting the parents on board. Um, one barrier that parents could face is, is their own situation. So be that uh, working hours, job seeking, finding new jobs, um, uh, getting into employment that's that's changed their routine. Uh, and we offer an, a wraparound care, extended services provision from 7.30 in the morning to 5.45 in the evening. And again, for those children that are um, pupil premium, we can use their pupil premium funding to, to offer that wraparound service. Uh, and similarly, we will target those children that maybe are having issues with punctuality, patterns, noticing children that are coming in regularly late or on certain days, offering um, extended wraparound care for those children on those particular days, again, just to identify the barriers. And I think with that, it goes back to the systems and processes, the analysis of trends and patterns that we're seeing, but then most importantly, building that relationship with the parent body so that they feel supported and understand what we're about. Thanks, back to you, Erin. Thank you, Luke. Uh, uh, yeah, so that in, in summary really here's a slide uh, of the improvements that have been made uh, with implementing the systems and processes and our relentless approach. Um, still work to do obviously, but looking at the persistent absence figures where we were when it was at 26 and now at well 13.3 in 2018, currently that stands at 11%.
our approach of uh, you know the things that we've discussed uh, with you and uh, again similar pitch the overall absence how that's uh, uh, you know going the right way let's say and current overall absence 4.3 percent and then it's just again how these figures how we track and log that report it to our local governance and trustees just around for example in that academic year how many calls home were captured how many home visits were taken attendance meetings referrals penalties and what have you and then just a summary from the autumn term as well that it just kind of highlights that you can't take it for granted when the attendance figures are more favorable we just have to continue to be relentless in our approach uh, to ensure that all pupils are attending uh, school regularly and uh, punctually um, and just the next slide please So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, that's a snapshot of, of what we do at Brookhouse Primary. Uh, hopefully a few takeaways to share with your teams and, and we'll open up for any questions. If Excellent. there are any. Thank you very much, Aaron. Um, that's fantastic and very, very clear. I know there's been a few kind of technical issues on on um, on your end, but yeah, really, really clear and, and comprehensive kind of overview of, of everything that you're doing on attendance. We've had quite a few questions that have come in. I'll start off um, with a question about COVID, given that's in some ways the kind of topical con context in which um, in which all schools are operating under. And there's a question really about the specific work that you've done to to kind of ensure that attendance is is high in the context of of um, of COVID. But there's also actually a kind of a version of this question which was about long COVID and, and if you've had any experience of working with with children or families who have long COVID so so grateful for your views on 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 that um, subject. Yeah some experiences uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say very very few uh, although at the same time it's again in terms of the pastoral approach and the support on offer there and uh, just brokering that with the families around what the school day looks like, if there's any adjustments that need to be made, any risk assessments that need to put in place there, but it, it hasn't significantly affected us. OK, thank you. Um, there was a question here also about if you could say in a bit more detail about the the data that you use. You talked about um, looking at unauthorised absence and monitoring monitoring that, but is there more that you could say about um, yeah, about the way in which you use that data to kind of target um, the, the pupils or families that you work with particularly. Yeah, of course. So so part of the process is that uh, we receive a daily report on, on the attendance figures, but more importantly, who's absent and also what the reason is. So because it could be, you know, a dental appointment and evidence has been seen or something like that. So we are cited on every single child's absence and also the reason for that uh, and obviously you know in terms of the authorized absence that's kind of comes with an academic year but it's focusing on that unauthorized absence especially uh, as to what the reason is for that and, and that basically happens on a daily basis so that we're cited then our, our weekly anal um, analytics include obviously all year groups all key groups boys girls disadvantage SEND EAL and again, that helps us to analyse any trends, any particular peaks or troughs in any particular groups or, or uh, year, uh, year groups. But it's, it's kind of just that kind of precision and just being forensic as to what reason, uh, what, what is the reason for every single child's absence. And that just comes through from our um, uh, attendance data officer. Excellent. Um, Thank you for that. There is also a question. So we had a question here about whether or not you'd be willing to share the, the tiered letters, um, the template letters that, that you send to parents and, and that system. Is that something you'd be happy to? Yeah, to? absolutely. By, by all means. Yeah. And, and I think that the reason for that, and again, it's a cultural uh, part of the kind of community working with the families that uh, we're not saying 96 percent is OK. Uh, in that it, and we're, we're just kind of reminding you that it's just dropped below 96% uh, and then obviously the next one when it when it drops further 
meeting with the data officer and then when it gets very much towards uh, uh, being deemed persistent absent meeting with the educational welfare officer but yeah so that tiered letter approach and obviously uh, by all means yeah I'll, I'll forward those on to you guys to uh, circulate widely yeah, of course. Excellent um, th there was also a question here about um, about I guess striking the right balance in terms of the incentives uh, for people to attend so like how do you go about celebrating and rewarding good attendance without kind of at the risk of punishing or shaming unavoidable absence and and how you strike that sort of balance within within your yeah it, it, it's very much taken case by case and and of course we have our 100 percent attendance awards that i didn't uh so i forgot to mention so in the autumn you have a pizza party with, with the you know getting some arcade games in uh, in the spring you go to the cinema and in the summer you go to the theatre but of course that is case by case because at times uh, uh, you, you know it's not my fault if I had to go and have an operation and I was absent for a few days here and there so that's obviously taken into account and considered that's the kind of long-term uh, approach for every single pupil but obviously the weekly attendance is, is done uh, per class and of course there's mitigating factors there can always be those but it's, it's really just an incentive around the culture uh, for the children wanting to get the rosette that they get uh, the nice waft of you know the children salivate with the smell of the popcorn and they get a kind of cup of that to have and, um, and it just kind of motivates them to do all they can and it kind of avoids that uh, for want of a better phrase a coffin you off kind of culture that you you know if we, we've all got a little bit of a cough and a cold perhaps uh, but we can still come to school obviously within, within reason of course yeah. yeah of course thank you um we've had a question actually through here about um again about this kind of distinction between authorized and unauthorized absence and and just a question about do you take the same kind of approach to intervening for children that are off for extended periods of time with authorised absence? And at what point would you kind of look to step in for for families in in that circumstance? Yeah, it, it, it depends on what, what the case is uh, and obviously what evidence has been presented, what evidence has been seen. Uh, and that's where, of course, we'd be liaising with our education welfare officer for advice, guidance and support with that. And, and liaising with the families to, to you know get the children in uh, as soon as possible but yeah it, essentially if it was an authorised absence for a, a long period of time due to perhaps a medical or something like that uh, then we, we'd expect to see some evidence there and also be engaging with that family you know regularly uh, as a school and being supported by the education welfare officer. Perfect. Um, Luke's uh, set out for us very helpfully um, some kind of more of the detail about the, the pastoral support that you provide, the, the, the kind of wraparound in-house provision that you have. There's questions here about is, is that in-house predominantly most of that support or is that funded externally? Is that from pupil premium funding? Um, could you say a, a bit more about, about um, yeah, that, that in-house kind of wraparound work? Yeah, it is in house uh, uh, essentially, and uh, we we just uh, it's, it's a peppercorn, like you know, it costs five pounds for the tea time club where the children get a, a cooked meal, uh, you know, access a wider provision. We don't do it to make money, but obviously you know do it to to break even as best we can, uh, and if that's not the case, then we you know perhaps we can prop it up. But there's also uh, you know subsidiaries there as well. Uh, for you know, if children that struggle to cope at the start of the school day, then they can come in, access the breakfast club provision for 20 minutes before the school day starts, just so they can acclimatise and uh, you know get ready for the school day if they're feeling a bit anxious about that. And uh, similar with the uh, tea time club as well, we have an hour club as well. Uh, but again, it's just two pounds if parents are running late or something like that or they need to utilise that facility. But yeah, it, it's all done in house and, and we just have to keep a close eye on it, uh, you know, to make sure it breaks even. Like I said, certainly not to make a profit. It is, is very well attended. And, and also if there are families that are vulnerable um, with, uh, uh, you know, becoming uh, their pupils, children becoming persistently absent, then we can look at how we can further support. And, and sometimes that provision uh, does support them by making sure that their children are here for the school day because they've got the flexibility 
uh, before school and after school to make sure that happens. Excellent, thank you. And um, there are still lots of questions <laughs> streaming in um, here, so lots of kind of interest in, in everything that you've talked about. Um, I'll just take one or two more um, questions, one or two of the most kind of interesting ones that we've had through or where we've had um, the same question asked repeatedly. So there's some interest here in, in if you can just kind of set out again, both how many kind of staff are on your your direct sort of attendance team. You talked about the education welfare officer and some of the kind of different people that work on the pastoral side. But is there anything else that you that you can say about um, how roles and responsibilities are kind of distributed amongst the other teaching staff within within the school and, and how everyone kind of plays their part on attendance? Sure, yeah, so education welfare officer, we buy into that service uh, from local authority uh, and uh, we've bought in to get um, uh, half a day each week there. Uh, uh, we do have our parental engagement officer as well that you know supports with building those community links, family links and supports parents in, in a huge uh, uh, variety of ways. Uh, uh, and, and essentially uh, behaviour and attitudes is uh, the senior leadership's responsibility, uh, with, which includes the attendance there, but it very much sits within um, uh, the deputy head teacher's remit of uh, you know the behaviour and attitudes, attendance, personal development, those aspects uh, uh, fall within the deputy head's role there. So we're all accountable for you know every every adult that works in the school and that, that's the kind of culture there essentially it sits with the deputy head Luke as head of school uh, uh, and obviously myself in in my executive function uh, uh, and we are fortunate that we do have a data and attendance officer uh, that, that is dedicated to that uh, who, who's uh, part of the office admin team uh, that's able to produce the reports and um, you know, support with issuing letters and uh, all the follow ups and things like that. So, yeah, I suppose there's th those are the key people that are, are predominantly focused on on attendance. But again, like I say, everyone's aware of it as a school priority and uh, how we're working towards uh, meeting our targets. And Luke, did you want to um, come in on this question as well? Yeah, I was just going to add that obviously in terms of everyone's wider responsibility and every staffing structure is different, but I think something that's been really successful for us is the fact that on a week basis, um, attendance is discussed with class teachers so that they're really aware of what the trends and patterns are within their own class um, and have that accountability at phase meetings and uh, kind of at our weekly briefing. So we celebrate attendance, but also in those phase meetings with a with a direct line manager, there's a discussion around, OK, this is what your class's attendance is like. It's not good enough at the moment. What are we going to do about it? And kind of putting that onus onto the class teacher as well so that they're taking that responsibility. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, that's really, really helpful. Um, I'm on to our final question, I think now. We've worked our way through a kind of fair number. Um, and it's, a, it's another kind of one for you to, to, to if there's anything else to add, um, Aaron, which sure. is about punctuality um, in the classroom. We've talked about attendance, but um, what are your kind of systems and policy around ensuring that kind of punctuality of, of, of pupils? It's very much around leadership, high presence uh, every day. Uh, support with, uh, uh, again, we can use the EWO who can do a late gate for us, uh, uh, you know, every so often. But again, it's the pupils' attitudes to the learning. So uh, learning starts pretty much immediately as soon as they're in with an early bird activity, then into you know, you know phonics and guided reading and what have you across the school day. But uh, and again, it's you know we don't have a problem with holding the parents to account. We are on a busy road. At times the bus might be kind of slightly delayed, but. But what you do see is, is kind of stood at the exit for the bus that stops pretty much outside and hurrying them in and hurrying them in. And, and you definitely see that, uh, you, you know, when you're doing well with that because the parents and the children are running because uh, because they know you, they know they're late. And, and we're always outside the main gates kind of coaching them in and, and uh, you, you know, getting a hurry on there. But yeah, and, and if there's anything around the pupils being persistently late, uh, obviously it's the why how we can work with the parents, but also how that's discussed at our inclusion meetings, because uh, there could be some wider issues there. But 
yeah, it, it's, it's it comes down to to the culture, the expectations, and and for that one especially, it's very much about high presence. So when it's two minutes to do, and you can see them three minutes away, it's you know waving them forwards, hurry up, hurry up, come on, let's go, uh, and yeah, just everyone in but there is a bit of an element of of uh, how, how you inconvenience parents as well if if they are late so we do have like a kind of uh, a bit of an onerous uh, form that they have to complete as in name surname reasons for being late and there's quite a lot and it's uh, it's very tedious for the parents to do but that's quite a quick win to implement there so that uh, again if you are late then it's going to cost you time because we expect you to fill out uh, a form uh, as to why that's quite a good strategy to um, uh, support uh, pupils attending school uh, punctually. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Um, and thank you for taking um, a kind of a barrage of, of, uh, of different questions. And, and I think all, all kind of really useful things for, for people to hear and to be considering themselves. Um, there are a couple of bits that I wanted to mention just before we um, call this webinar to a kind of conclusion. Um, firstly, for people that joined uh, one of our first webinars before Christmas that we ran with um, North Shore Academy, that's uh, an outstanding secondary school um, up in up in in Stockton. They're currently actually piloting an attendance support program um, for other secondary schools across the country. And we've got a link to that support program. So if anybody's dialed in, obviously it's, it's a kind of predominantly secondary context that we're interested in there. But if you're interested in that or know of schools that might be interested in, please um, pass on the link to that support program. And the applications to get additional support through that program are open until the 6th of April. So you've got a couple of weeks if you're a secondary school that's dialed into this to, to sign up for that program. The other thing that I just wanted to quickly mention is that we will be publishing the national attendance census data um, and that will be coming out tomorrow. So that will include breakdowns of absence and persistent absence as well as uh, codex. So you'll be able to see the, the kind of rates of, of attendance nationally for the last academic year. So check that um, the, the data out if you're interested in that, which will be published tomorrow. And the final thing, which is something that I keep on mentioning at these webinars, is the live attendance data project that the department has 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 launched. And that's a project where we're looking to automate the collection of attendance data so that we can kind of streamline that data collection process, but also so we can share that back with schools, um, local authorities and multi academy trusts. So if you haven't seen that uh, the live data project, uh, I think there should be some some details about that on your screen and please do sign up for that so that we can that we can kind of um, we can collect that data and, and share it back in the most usable way possible. So thanks again to Aaron and Luke for joining us today and thanks everybody for, for dialing in. As I say, we've got another webinar next Thursday. So if you're interested in hearing from a special school about how they've improved their attendance, please do join us for 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 that um, for that webinar too. And that just leaves me again to thank Aaron and Luke for a very interesting and insightful um, presentation into what they do at Brookhouse Primary School. So thank you.